this painting, Paris Street Rainy Day, Calibat um, is painting something using perspective. Now he's an impressionist, and so impressionists are mostly focused on these like bright colors, less form. So when he aired this for the debut in 1877, many people thought, well, he can draw or create shape and space. Therefore, he is not quite an Impressionist, but in fact, this went down in history as part of that movement. Now, um, this painting is located here in Chicago, which is really exciting because it's a large piece. It's something that when you go up and you see, it kind of takes your breath away. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to show you right now how to use Google Art and Culture to kind of go into a museum on a day where you can't go into a museum. So if we go to here and we click on Street View, what it does is it puts us right inside the museum where this piece is displayed. Now it's displayed with all these other impressionistic pieces, and you can walk around and see all these other works. Sometimes it helps to look at other works to understand why they curated or why they put that painting next to all those other pieces and how it has a conversation with those pieces next to it. So it's actually a really powerful thing to see how a museum is actually curated. So what I like to do is I like to walk up to it. And one thing I notice when I look at this piece is the size between all these impressionistic pieces and then suddenly you have this gigantic piece. So if you can imagine standing up in front of this, you can just see how vast or large this is. You can see that you can almost fall into this painting. That person, those two people walking towards you is really, really close. And if we take a close dive into this painting, so if we go back to not the museum view, but I encourage you to poke around the museum. It's a resource um, that is really valuable to be able to see a museum that you can't travel to or get into. You can go and learn about all these other paintings. But if I go back to my original view here, if I look at this painting and I have these, the zoom, I can go up really large. What I'm noticing is Kaiba using different people inside this painting to tell different stories. This man up front here obviously seems a little bit wealthier than the people behind him. You have somebody that's doing some work in the middle of the day. It's the only person I believe in this painting that's portrayed in white. The reason why is during that time period, Paris was a very dirty place. And I know this painting makes it look really pretty, but it really realistically at this time was not. When uh they paint when Calibat painted this he wanted to show a more idealistic side of Paris so the idea that it was so dirty people wore dark clothes so that it wouldn't display that dirt and so that the only person that's not wearing that would be somebody that's probably at work a little bit of a lower class citizen so these people here look like they're you know the predominant the they're right in the foreground they're right at the forefront he even showed them so large that he cut right over in the knees, which during this time period wasn't a common technique or a uh, common strategy. But the reason why we're looking at this painting today is not because of the pure rich history of this painting, which I encourage you, I'll put some links in here to continue investigating, learning about this painting. There's a lot of things that I can't cover in this YouTube video that is just worthwhile. Dive in, investigate it. The more you know about art, the better you are as an artist. But we're going to look at this painting in terms of two-point perspective. That's why we're going to focus on this painting today. Um, what we're going to be seeing is we're going to be seeing Polybot using perspective. And that's the reason we want to focus on this painting today is we want to look at how Polybot was using that perspective. So. One thing to note is that when we have this building back here that he created, it looks like these front diagonal lines are climbing down the building into vanishing points. Now we know that this building has two vanishing points. So let's go ahead and put a point there and a point there. So if we try to understand how Kaliabat constructed this building, we can start to see that what he was doing was he was using these vanishing points to create this building. So I can connect this here and connect this here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a vertical line all the way down and a vertical line all the way down. Now I have the bare, bare structure of this building. The next thing I wanna do is understand how he 
put in these window ledges. So what he did, again, is he's taking all his lines and going to his vanishing point. Now, because he has two, what he does on one side, he has to do on the other side. So again, I'm going through, I'm taking these window ledges, creating this space by using my vanishing points, the bottom even. Oh. And what I can start to see is I can start to see what Kalibot was doing. Now, even these windows are gonna go into this, and we're gonna come back to this a little bit later in our lesson, um, our lesson probably tomorrow, and how to add in windows and those other details. But I wanted you to see firsthand how Kalibot's using just these two vanishing points, one and two, to construct this very um, essential building to his painting. That is what we're gonna be doing today, is we are gonna be looking a little bit like Kaliobot, and we are going to be creating a two-dimensional corner. So let's get started. In this video, we are going to be looking at two-point perspective. And really a couple words that we wanna talk about really fast are vanishing point, horizon line, space. We're gonna to try to create a three-dimensional space on a 2D surface. The surface is flat, that makes it two-dimensional. Now this cup is not flat, it, I can see it from all different perspectives. That means this is three-dimensional. This takes up three-dimensional space. I can move it all around and observe it from every angle. A flat surface like this, part of being an artist is the challenge of taking something that's 3D and recreating it on a two-dimensional surface. So let's get started. The first thing you might need is a ruler. If you don't have a ruler, you can always use the corner or side of a book, any kind of straight edge really. Uh, another piece of paper even works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by making a horizontal line. And I'm gonna make my horizontal line be my horizon line, and I'm gonna make it very light. I don't need it to be very dark. Now, the hor the, this horizontal line happens to be the horizon line because it separates the, gr the ground from the sky. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in two vanishing points. So I'm gonna start off here and add in one vanishing point over here, and then I'm gonna add in one vanishing point over there. So now I have two vanishing points, okay? Now what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to create that similar uh, street corner that Calubat created in his. Ours is gonna be a little bit different, but the principles of two-point perspective are gonna be the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and in the middle of my paper, I'm gonna make a vertical line right in the center. Slide over, make another vertical line. And then to cap it off, I'm gonna do a horizontal line on top of it and a horizontal line on the bottom. Now what I've created is a gigantic rectangle in the middle of my paper. That's gonna be the very center of my building. Now, if I wanted to show more of the street and less of the building, what I can do is use my eraser and bring up the bottom of this rectangle a little bit higher. So it's a little bit closer to my horizon line, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start creating the outside of the building. So what I wanna do is place my ruler or straight edge or whatever you have on top of the corner of the building, or in this case, the rectangle, and trace down to the vanishing point. I have to do that again on this side. Find the corner of the building, make sure my ruler's on the corner of the building and my ruler's on the vanishing point. And I'm going to make another diagonal line. Same thing on this side. I'm going to go down, diagonal line, and I'm gonna do one more diagonal line. Okay, so now I have this idea of where my street might be. And I even might make another street on the side here and another street on the side here by just using diagonal lines to go out, okay? So I have the corner, this building that Kalibat had in the center of his painting. I kind of have a similar one to mine. Now we remember when we were looking at that painting that Kalibat was using those lines, diagonal lines going to his vanishing point to be his window ledges. We can do that as well. So what I'm gonna do, is I like to go ahead and on my middle rectangle, I like to actually measure these. Now you don't have to measure them, but I'm going to. So I'm gonna say, let's use inches instead of centimeters. 
I'm going to mark mine every inch. So one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch. Again, put my zero at the top, one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch. And so now what I can see is I can see these nice diagonal lines that can go across. And these are gonna be the center of my building, maybe my window ledges. Depending on how your building is going to look, these lines will mean something different to you. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find the corner of that line and I'm gonna to go to the vanishing point. And I'm gonna to go to the vanishing point. And I'm gonna to go to the vanishing point. And make sure I'm gonna to go to the vanishing point. Now, the one thing I can do is I can go through, remember we talked about making that horizon line very light because I can get rid of that right inside my building. You don't need that horizon line. Now, whatever I do on this side, because it's two point perspective, I have to do it on this side as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead, put it on the horizontal line and make my diagonal to my vanishing point, to my vanishing point, to my vanishing point, and to my vanishing point. Perfect. Okay, so I have these window ledges. I have my building. This is a really good start. I have my two vanishing points. Everything's kind of looking uh, pretty proportional. This is a great place to start. Now, one thing I'm gonna do before I start even doing anything else is I might make my street corner. Now, depending how you wanna make that, what I'm gonna do for mine is I'm gonna find the middle of my rectangle and I'm going to go ahead and just make a line, a diagonal line, how thick I want my sidewalk to be, very lightly. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side try to keep it the same thickness on both sides so my sidewalk's not wider on one than the other. And where it meets in the middle, I'm gonna go ahead and erase out those extra pieces around it. And now I have this, this sidewalk si that um, goes well with my building. Now, putting the lines on the sidewalk, breaking up the sidewalk, this is a problem that um, we teach it every year and one thing that um, students sometimes get, sometimes don't, is because the sidewalk is flat, I have to follow my horizon line. I slide down, keep it horizontal, and I'm gonna keep these lines, and as these, ho these horizontal lines come closer to the middle of the image, they are gonna get wider apart, okay? It would be the same thing on the other side as well. So this is a place that I'm going to stop for today. I want you guys to go ahead and create this. Create it as clean as you can. If you make mistakes, remember to draw light, use your eraser. Tomorrow what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be starting to add in the different windows as we focus on this in part two. We're gonna be focusing on the windows, streets, we're gonna be starting to add in the details. But for today's lesson, what I wanted you to see is I wanted you to see this idea of using two vanishing points having that perspective showing that we're standing right in the center of a corner and we can look both ways. So um, reach out to me with any questions or um, use my email address if you need um, some guidance. You can always send me a picture. And yeah, so I will see you on part two.